Hello and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're looking at the Realism Laptop Icon Tutorial. I've got my gradient canvas here, which is about 1800 by 1300. And I have my colors on my right hand side. So let's get into it. First I'm going to start with a rectangle. Selecting the uh, rectangle tool, I'm just going to drag it across to about here. Let's scale this in slightly. I think this is good. And I want to give it some rounded corners. I think about here is good. Then, let me just increase the opacity on this. I just want this to be a deep, this deep gray actually. You can even make it slightly grayer. And I'm going to double click X of this. And we're going to scale in holding Control and Shift. Then we're going to select this black. Good. And just to scale up just a tad bit more. Good. So when we scale in, we notice that it's not perfectly aligned on both the width and height. So we're just going to stretch out the width to match the height a bit. Holding Shift to stretch it out so that both sides are stretching out. And you want to give this a bit more. This looks good, and also the circular, the roundedness is also a bit off, so I'm just gonna go this in a bit so it's not so off. Let's just scale this back down a bit, holding, oops, let's hold scale this back down a bit, holding shift so that both sides are moving. Good, I think this looks just about right. So at the top and bottom. We could go out a little bit more. Yeah, I think this is good. Alright then. For the next step, we are going to duplicate you and carry you down. You duplicate with Control and D. By the way, just lift it up about here, and we're just going to scale this in with this transformational handle right here. And then we're just going to round him again. So when we scale it in, the roundness of the rectangle becomes deformed. I think this is about it. And then we're going to go to our node tool and we're going to convert this to a path. And that will give us our nodes that we want to edit individually. Then we're going to select the bottom two nodes and we're going to make sure that show transformational handles for selected nodes is activated. Hold Control and Shift and we're going to drag out. Good. And that will give us the look of it being like the keyboard is coming to us so it's the 3d illusion right there you can even lift this up slightly higher okay so for the next step now that we have this height here we want to create this bottom section. Let me just change this and move this across because if you color it, it's sort of wonky. So let me just edit that. Not that you'll see it real tough, but it's good to be clean in what you're doing. <coughs> <coughs> My apology. Okay. And then we're going to move on to the bottom. So we're going to sort of duplicate this, carry it down. Activate our Bezier tool, draw a line holding control to make it straight, select this and the Bezier line that we just drew, go to division and I'm just going to delete this, this bottom part with the keyboard and then I'm going to select this and invert and scale it up so that it matches here. Then I'm just going to select the two bottom nodes and I'm going to hold control and push them up. It's looking okay. 
good. The next part, we want to scale this up even more. So just gonna drag this transformation handle and pull it up. Great. So that it has a very sleek and professional fin bezel. And lift this part up too, to match the circle right here. And you can definitely take your time when you're doing this, but like I say, this is a tutorial, so I do have to have a bit of speed on me. But then I'm going to select these two at the end. Again, I'm just going to bring them in slightly. Good. That gives a slight bend. You can do, you can delete this and then delete that node and then you can just use your handles and drag you in and I'm going to do the same here and use your handles and drag you in good and that really does help to sell that so for the next step what we're going to do we're going to activate our rectangle tool come down to this part right here and we're gonna create a rectangle. Let's make it gray so that we can see it. Let's drag it across, holding control while you drag, and this will help to keep it straight. And right here. And we wanna round these ones a bit better now. Good. And I think that's looking really nice. Nice, and that's gonna be that strip that separates the keyboard base from the keyboard top. Good, then we're gonna duplicate this one once more. This big black rectangle. We're going to get rid of the circular nodes and holding control and shift while I pull up, makes it even. I'm gonna make this a white. In fact, I think you can even make this a gray just for the aesthetics, carry this across the side and yeah, I think this looks like the laptop base looks pretty good so we can sort of move on, let's add our circles too, which is the camera so go into our ellipse tool, hold control and shift to scale up, duplicate it and scale in and I'm just going to select the both of them and I'm going to go to object and group then <coughs> i'm gonna select this and this the camera and the camera and the um laptop black part of the laptop case and we're gonna go to object align and distribute which should be here and we're just gonna center it make sure last selected is activated so you want to select the camera and then this part this part of the laptop last and just center it so that the camera goes into the center that way you don't have to worry about moving it yourself okay now we can actually move on to the sheens and blurs so we have it here we're going to start off with the screen and first up I'm going to duplicate this and go to path and inset. Good. And then I'm going to paint this white. Good. And the inset doesn't always give you the cleanest cut. So I'm just going to go in and make sure that it's clean. But inset is better to use in a lot of situ situations because you can definitely be assured that it's going to cut into the shape by a set amount of pixel and that's exactly what you need so that it gets is even all around the inset even though it may be jagged because the node groups are out of sync it's still good that you use it this one up top is probably the most important one so 
I'm not going to focus on the others. Then I'm going to go and activate the Bezier tool with B. Hold Control and drag down. And that will give us the straight line in current. Select these two, go to Path and Division once more. We're going to delete this white segment with the keyboard. And then we're going to activate the gradient tool and click once so the white is selected and drag down. Then we're going to drag this up. You can drag down slightly a bit more. And that will give us the laptop sheen. I think we could even drag these all out a bit more. Do a little bit. Um, you can just drag out just a tad more. And let's just lift this up slightly. So that it comes here. Don't really want it down here. You can just straighten this. Don't really want it on round at the bottom. Okay. All right. Next, we can move on to the actual keyboard itself. And for that, we're going to be using a radial gradient. So, what we really want is that we want it to look like it's got a bit of of a curve of a gradient. So we're going to select for the center of this, we want the center of this to be the lighter color and we want the outside to be the black. Let's bring this line down a bit. We're just using the dropper tool which is D to select each color. But you can find the dropper tool right here. and. It's Black's a little bit, um, this gray is a little bit too gray, so I'm just going to left click and drag this circle across the gray and the light gray and the dark gray, and that will give me a darker gray to work with. And I think this is good, this could line up a bit, so we're going to go to Path Fill and Stroke, Object Fill and Stroke, sorry. And Object fill and stroke, and it's gonna bring up the lightness. It was a slightly too uncomfortable with it, and um, it's moving kind of slow on my end. Not sure why the green is behaving like that. Let's scale out, and yeah, I think somewhere around there is good. You know, again, you can sort of just lift this up. If it's a bit too low, I think it's a bit too low for my hands, I'm just lifting it up. My taste. Yeah, and then I can just bring you in. And then bring you in from this side too. Good. Alright, so we got this part finished. For the next part now, what we want to do we want to make this gray strip here <coughs> look like it belongs to the laptop a bit more. So we are going to bring this across and focus our efforts on it now. So the first thing we're going to do is duplicate it and then bring the duplicate down. Then we want to scale the duplicate in and lift it up slightly. We're going to select this gray. Let's make this one a lighter gray, the one behind it. And then we're gonna get this and we're gonna blur this to about 0 0.2. Because 0 0.2 blur is good. And that looks good. Let's bring this down a bit so that it doesn't look out of place. And I think we can make this an even lighter grey. We want to give it that silver look. And that looks good. Okay, for the next step, 
we are going to activate our rectangle tool and we're going to draw a rectangle I'm going to color this rectangle dark gray that's a black in this instance and we want the gradient to activate the gradient tool and just pull a gradient right across let's make this linear and pull across holding control and we're going to put this about here I'm going to duplicate it on this side Caram here on this side holding control to keep it straight and put it here right. and that really helps to sell the sheen of the laptop making sure it cuts across you want to carry it more to the lower end the bottom great and let's add a bit I make this a bit more silver still yeah I think that's good and this looks really good all right so we can move on to this part here on the bottom I might as a little fin so I'm just gonna bring it back down again and this is really trial and error you have the opportunity to take your time to find the right fit so I'm going to duplicate this with Control and D and then I'm going to add a pan to this so I'm going to go to pattern right here in the field dial box and I want this pattern to be a checkerboard so I'm going to select checkerboard now the checkerboard is sort of thick here we want it to be thin I want to be smaller boxes because you want it to emulate a sort of grill so we're just going to double click to activate this node and this will rotate it and this node will decrease the size and increase the size of every individual box so proportionally so we're just going to pull it in to decrease the size and pull it in pull it in put it in to decrease the size holding control I'm going to pull this in but control and shift pulls it in proportionally and it gives us more boxes which gives us this grill effect which is really good but before we put it there I'm just going to first select this and I'm going to give this a gradient and make it look like it's more 3D I'm going to put this into a black and this one we want it to be a grey I think that's looking good I'm going to duplicate that and put this down here for a second I'm going to put this over black as is looks really nice and just drop it underneath using our layer control tools using our layer step hierarchy tools and then we're just going to reduce the opacity of it slightly I think about 17 is looking good that will give us that grill effect you can even lift it up a bit more 21 and then I'm going to carry this over and I'm going to reduce the opacity of this to about 20 so let's change it to 20 put this underneath and this kind of solidifies the grill effect so we have our laptop complete now we're just going to add some shading to this this icon very very handy when you want to have mock-ups and so when you have a nice looking design for your laptop and you can just have it showing on the screen I've used this so many times it's not even a joke but it's very very useful and because I'm not a fan of always using the same iMac <laughs> um, display for everything like you see a lot of designers prefer to use I think that's just they use it too much and it's just some um, 
just nullifies the beauty of the cra of the craftsmanship of the machine. But I know it's popular, but it's just far too much. Then it's um, this is a great route for you. I mean, a black laptop is pretty classic. You can beat it in terms of that. So. Okay, what we're gonna do instead of using the rectangle, I'm just gonna use a circle instead. I think so. The ellipse does a better job of this blur. I'm gonna give it a blur about boot. Let's give it a blur of four. See how that looks? No, too high. Let's try. Let's try a blur of 1.6. And that does look good. <coughs> good. So we've inverted everything. What I want to do is just remove this pattern here, just to increase the just increase the time that it works together. Let's get everything here, and I'm going to activate a gradient, and I'm just going to pull it down. Good. Then I make the gradient black. Let's pull it down. And then I'm going to squinge it just a little bit. Put it up. Just a little bit. And does the squinge look good? I think what we can do, we can unify all of these two, go path and union. I don't have to squinge it too terrible. And Let's give it a bit of space and then I'm going to duplicate this bar right here and put it here and just reduce the opacity. This doesn't look like we lost everything. And I think we have it. There is our realistic laptop. Icon tutorial complete with reflection. <laughs> if you like this tutorial, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more tutorials like this, you can leave a comment in the blog post. Make sure to head over to the blog post for the video part of the tutorial. Until I see you again, get up and design a new door. Later. <laughs>